Like it. Awesome. Hey, and so pumped for Marissa and her family and just so thankful for us celebrating your birthday, but also really celebrating her declaring her rebirthday in Jesus Christ today. Can we give her a hand one more time for that's so awesome. Well, uh, you know, we were thinking about uh, what series to do for Christmas season, you know. We like to do a, a sermon series. And so we thought about, you know, a COVID Christmas or my Corona Christmas list or away from a stranger, six feet away to be exact. Uh, but we know what, we're done with that life. We're going to talk about the best gift ever. And just to give you a little, I guess, inside scoop to that, the, the, the series is kind of birthed out of a podcast I listened to back in the summer. Um, I love listening to podcasts, and one of those featured a man named Gordon McDonald. He's 80 years old, and uh, the name of the podcast was A View from 80, and he just gave all this great wisdom, after having pastored for many years, uh, authored some books, just a really humble but wise man, and one of the 15 uh, wisdom points he gave in that podcast really struck me. He gave a list in that one item, he gave a list of five things we should say genuinely and frequently to other people in our life. And that if he were to go back and do life again, he would, do, he would say these, these things more often. And it really, really struck a chord in my heart. And the more I thought about it, I thought, well, these five things that we can say to other people, they're gifts. They're like the best gifts you could ever give someone, regardless. So here's what's really cool. We're giving you some free gift ideas. You're just going to say words to people for this Christmas. If, you're, you know, if, if, the, if the pandemic has hurt your income a little bit, see, you're getting a good free gift idea. But what I would argue is that though these gifts that we're going to talk about over these next five weeks cost you nothing from your wallet, they do cost you emotionally and relationally. They cost you some vulnerability because you're opening up your heart. And sometimes we are hesitant to open up our hearts. In fact, Gordon McDonald called these five inner core transactions where you're giving some of yourself to someone else. And in so doing, you're, giving, you're speaking life into them. It's a powerful thing. So we're going to walk through five things like this. And you may say, that don't sound specifically Christmassy, and you're right. But what's really cool about each of these five things we're going to look at is they do tie back to the Christmas narrative in a really cool way. So we're going to make sure we do that as we journey through this together. And so we're going to begin by saying this. One of the best gifts you could ever give someone is your sincere thank you. It's one of the best gifts you could give someone. And I know we got kids in the room, students in the room. we got families at home watching online, listening online. I want to speak to you for just a moment and give you a trade secret. Kids, students, when you do this, to us adults, it melts us. And you could totally get whatever you want from us. It really works. I've even told my kids, I'm like, listen, when you said that, that just, whoo, oh man, when you said, dad, thank you for, uh, dad, I really appreciate it. Like, okay, what do you want? I'll give you whatever you want. It's powerful. It's, and I, I you know, don't manipulate us. I mean, even though it could be made true, you could pull that off. But I'm just saying that to say they really are powerful. A moment when someone pauses their life, takes time and takes moment and takes energy and says, I want to tell you, thank you for this. It's huge. It's really, really powerful. Uh, the words thank you actually have Latin roots. And it, uh, the Latin word that it is rooted from literally means think. Even though we say thank you, what we're really saying is I'm thinking of you. I'm going to remember who you are. I'm going to remember what you did for me. It's, 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 it's seared in my memory because what you did was so powerful to me. And when you take a moment to tell someone, I'm thinking of you. I'm going to remember you. I will never forget you. It's very, very powerful. It's a life-giving gift that you can give. And so one of the people in the Bible that was really, really good at giving those life-giving thank yous to others was the Apostle Paul. And I'll give you an example. Ephesians 1.16 says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Isn't that a powerful thing to say to someone? I have not stopped giving thanks for you. And when he says it that way, he is saying, I'm giving thanks to God for you every time I think of you and pray for you. It's really powerful. 
He goes on to give us kind of like, hey, this is something we all should be doing when he says this in Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. He encourages the believers that he had actually somewhat raised spiritually. Be thankful. And then I love this one. This is my favorite thank you verse in the Bible, Philippians 1.13. I thank my God every time I remember you. I mean, that, that's, to say that to someone sincerely is so life-giving. And then probably the best mandate verse about gratitude is what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So he basically declares that it's a part of who we are as a follower of Jesus Christ to be thankful. It's a characteristic and a trait that becomes part of who we are the more we follow Jesus Christ. Speaking of Jesus Christ, we're going to now turn to the Christmas narrative. We have some examples of this gratitude that are pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, we often look in Luke chapter 2 when we want to read the Christmas story. In Luke chapter 2, that's when we see the angels singing to the shepherds. We see the shepherds running to Bethlehem to the stable. We see Jesus as a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. But we're, what we're going to look at here in just a moment is the 40-day-old baby Jesus. Did you know that the Bible talks of a time when Jesus was only 40 days old and what happened to him? We're going to read that together. But to give you a little bit of context, it happens right after the account where we hear the shepherds and the angels and we see him in the manger. Right after that, it says that Mary and Joseph circumcised the baby Jesus according to custom on the eighth day of his life. So when he was eight days old, he was named Jesus and they had the circumcision ceremony for him. And then it says they went to the temple. And we know based on Leviticus chapter 12, because of what Mary was doing, she was going through her purification rites, which every Jewish woman would do after giving birth. We know that that happened 33 days after the circumcision of that child. So we know that what we're about to read happened when Jesus was 40 days old. And here's what happened. Luke 2, 22. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses... Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. So they had to go make a sacrifice as part of these purification rites. And actually, in Leviticus 12, which is only eight verses long, it describes this, what they're doing, and it actually prescribed a lamb for sacrifice but it said, if you can't afford a lamb, then do the pigeons and the doves instead. It's just a reminder that the king of kings was born into great humility. They were poor. They didn't have a whole lot. And so they had to use doves and pigeons instead. It goes on to say, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Boy, he's flash forwarding to the crucifixion right there. And it goes on to say in verse 36, there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. And when Joseph and Mary had done everything required 
by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. So they walk into the temple to go through the purification rites and they meet these two people, Simeon and Anna. And all they did the whole time they were in the temple was thank God. They were so thankful. They, uh, Simeon grabbed Jesus out of their arms and praised God and gave thanks. He literally said, now I can die. <laughs> I'm so glad I finally got to see Jesus, the salvation of the world right here in the flesh. The Holy Spirit had led him and told him, you're going to get to see this before you die. And then Anna, we believe, was probably living in the temple for at least five decades based on when she was probably married, praying and fasting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting till the day would come when she would see the redemption of Israel embodied in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. It's a really cool moment, and it reminds us of the power of a thank you. And the reason that they were so filled with gratitude is because they recognized who Jesus was. And you saw this coming when you saw the name of this ser sermon series, but they recognized that Jesus is the best gift ever. He really is. Now, I know that's cheesy to say. It's a very Christmassy thing to say. But I want you to park here with me for a moment. You know the year we've been through, right? It's been a rough one. A lot of weird things have happened. And there have been some silver linings, but there's a lot of things that are so different than what we want them to be. What's really been tested in the past eight, nine months has been our contentment. And I will stand before you and say that American Christ followers have big-time contentment issues. We really do. And that's before the pandemic. But then when the pandemic comes and it messes with our stuff, changes the way we do life, it's difficult and it's painful. We all acknowledge that. But the one thing that the pandemic or anything else that could ever happen cannot do, it cannot take away Jesus from us. It cannot take away our eternal relationship with him. If anything, it will only drive us closer to him, relying on him like never before, looking to him for help and answers like never before, waiting on him. We hate to wait. But Simeon and Anna waited and waited and waited, and it was worth the wait. And if you're tired of waiting for things to, to, to happen the way you think God wants them to happen in your life, listen, the story of Simeon and Anna says, hey, just, just wait. He is enough. Christ is enough. What you have is enough to get you through anything. And it's such a powerful reminder to us, looking at the moment that they had in the temple with this 40-day-old Jesus. It caused Simeon and Anna to erupt into worship and to erupt into thanks. And it floored Mary and Joseph big time. You know, one of the other people in the Bible that was really good at giving thanks was the psalmist David. He says in Psalms 1 and 36, 1, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. It says in Psalm 104, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Psalm 118, 28, you are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Psalm 105, 1, oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Psalm 9, 1, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. Psalm 69, 30, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. If you were to do a Google search and say, let me see some modern worship songs where we say thank you to God. They are rare. And I believe it's an indication that we need to learn from Simeon and Anna and David and Paul and say, you know what? We praise him, but do we thank him? Do we actually pause and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Do we do that not only with our trite prayers, but with our very lives? Where are we with our contentment? 
in our walk with Jesus right now. Jesus is indeed the best gift ever. And I will say this to you, opening up the gift of Jesus in your life results in you having a life-giving gratitude towards others. They tie together. If you're thinking, man, how can I be more grateful? How can I be better at expressing gratitude towards others? Well, it comes down to the level of contentment you understand through your relationship with Jesus Christ. The more we follow Jesus, the more we understand that our contentment truly is indestructible. Now, I get it. We're going to have times. I give myself a pity party every now and then about things. I can get sad about things. There's things I want. I got a wish list on my Amazon account too. You know, I put things in there. There are things I want. There's things I wish. But at the end of the day, guys, I hope that we're learning more than ever before that Christ is enough. And what it causes us to have is a peace that transcends all the other wants and wishes and the longings of our hearts. When Christ becomes the greatest longing of our heart, it changes things. And it gives us the ability to see people differently and the world differently and our moments in life differently. Or we may actually just pause and stand eyeball to eyeball with someone in our life and say, I want to tell you right now how thankful I am for you. When you do that, man, it is life giving to do that. I want to give you a couple of next steps. One is to simply open up the gift of salvation and give thanks to God forever. <laughs> if you've not done this yet, this is huge. This is a big deal. This will transform your life to take hold of the one thing that the world can never take away from you, that no one can ever take away from you, this gift. And yes, I'm going to keep on with the Christmas allegory here and say, you know what? God has prepared that gift. He has gift wrapped it for you. He's labeled it with your name personally on it. And it is under the tree. But it's up to you to take it and unwrap it and receive it in your life. This great gift of salvation to pay for by Jesus on the cross. Forgiveness of all your sins and an eternal relationship with the God of the universe who created everything in it, including you. And it's an amazing gift. And it will cause you to have contentment that a pandemic cannot take away. But it's up to you to receive it. If you've never received it, I invite you to talk to God today and say, God, forgive me of my sins. Save me. Make me your child forever. And when you do this, friends, you become his child forever. He gives you new eternal life in him forever. Here's a second step to take. Give the gift of your thank you to someone today and every day. What if that became something that was a part of our everyday lives? That we made sure at some point we expressed thank you. That we gave a thank you to someone in our life. Man, I believe that would change our own attitudes, but it would build up our relationships. And these inner core transactions of giving that away is going to be huge. It's going to bless you as much as it blesses them. But I'm telling you, when you do this, it gives life to people. When's the last time you've given life to someone but taking time to write a handwritten note or walking up to them and says, I've got something really important that I need to tell you. I am thankful for you. I thank God for you, and here's why. I'm telling you right now, that is the best gift you can ever give someone. It will give life into their soul, and it will bond you together in a special way, and it's an act of worship to God to do that. He asks us to do that. It is the will of God that we live life that way. With his help, you can give thank yous away that will give life to other people. Man, it will bless your family. Your child needs to hear this. And kids, your parents need to hear those words from you. And if you got a job, your boss needs to hear those words from you. Your coworker needs to hear those words from you. Your neighbor, there are people that are so craving something. And you can give life to them by just saying, I want to tell you, why I'm thankful for you. If you've not done that in recent days, weeks, months, maybe it's something you never do, start doing it today and watch what happens in your life and watch how God uses you to bless others and watch how God uses that to change your own heart 
and give you an indestructible contentment that comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Lord, in the quietness of this moment, there might be one watching or listening online or in this very room that has never called upon your name and asked you to save them. They've never opened up the gift of your salvation. And Lord, right here, right now, may they call upon your name and say, God, please forgive me of my sins. I believe in you. Make me your child forever. And Lord, help them to know that nothing can ever take away that salvation, that free gift of eternal life, that relationship that they now have with you forever. And Lord, you've taught us today the power of the words, thank you. Lord, we've been hoarding the gift of our thank yous to ourselves. May we start giving them away freely to the people around us. Help us to speak life into them by giving these thank yous away. Lay someone on our heart right now that you want us to tell thank you today, before this day ends, to give them a thank you that speaks life into them, Lord. Help us to do that today. We pray it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you took a step of faith today, we want to know about that so we can encourage you, so we can equip you in every way to continue your walk with Jesus. So text us and let us know that. Text the word GIFT to our church number, 859-356-3162, and we can begin a conversation. We won't be creepy and stalk you or anything like that. Or maybe you just have questions about something. Let us know. Text the word GIFT that conversation with you or maybe you need something if you got anything you're going through that we can pray for you about that we can help you with please let us know that all right listen thank you for worshiping with us on facebook on youtube here in this room we are so thankful for you we thank you that you choose to worship together with us on this day god bless you have a great rest of your day